You know, it occurs to me, this RV is a little bit like me. It's kind of goofy and it sort of does things a little pass backwards. And on that note, hey everybody, Josh the RV Nerd with Vicious RV down here at Grand Design today. Finally, hey, getting my hands on the 23 BHE, yeah, you know me. Um, this is a floor plan that has uh, spawned some very similar clone type things like the Jfeather 22 BH. Wouldn't you happen to know it? I know some dorky dude on the internet with a video of that sucker. I'm not saying, I'm just saying check the link in the video description to compare. Anyway, um, this is kind of the original though. And really what they did here, it's like everybody and their brother makes a no slide campsite window dinette double over double bunkhouse with some kind of camp kitchen everybody does that and imagine goes yeah but we're not everybody uh hold my beer and what they came up with here they privatized the bedroom and they added a kitchen slide which really just opens the floor space of this thing up where if you are stuck inside on a rainy day that could be a really really nice feature about the only uh additional feature i'd personally like to see on this is if it had like one of those flip up cargo bunk houses for the the bunks in the back but other than that i think this thing is on point we have a true queen bed not the shorty pants camp queen goodyear endurance radials were prepped for tpms have an enclosed privatized docking center um a, a base level of factory solar and you have your choice between 12 volt or two-way fridges they put a good size patio awning on this they've got a great extended season weather package on these uh there's there's a lot of things that they're doing very well and i tell you what it's deceptive like uh, from the outside looking in you don't think it has really great campsite window coverage you can see the big window for the dinette sure but when you're inside of it the fact that there's two windows basically for each bunk and and two of those face the campsite of the rv you really have an awesome visual uh, reference point of your campsite, and this one really doesn't have a lot of windows that face the neighbors. So, hey, even better, bonus. Let me know what you like, what you dislike, and if you appreciate how we share good with the bad, make sure you hit that subscribe button and catch us on the next one. For now, let's get started inside there. Now, you first walk in, this is kind of what you might see right here. Technically, I'm standing in the bedroom, but I don't use a wide angle lens, which makes everything look uh, closer than it is. It's the opposite of objects in mirror might be closer than they appear, basically. Uh, so this is our entry door over here on the left to help you get your bearings. And this is the campsite of the RV. Now you might notice how there's some motion activated lighting in there. You may notice how it's dark outside, despite the fact that I'm inside one of Grand Design's facilities right now. I'm hoping those are motion activated lights and I'm hoping there's no security system and I'm hoping they haven't locked me in. Uh, because I don't know that the people who are in this building necessarily know that I'm here and what I'm doing. But that will be an entirely different story for an entirely different day, as Winnie the Pooh would say. Christopher Robin, by the way, grew up to be a total delinquent. What a turd. He, he, he looked like he was going to be such a nice boy. Now, I think I said each bunk has two windows. Um, that is... I might have gotten ahead of myself. That is incorrect. Top bunk has two windows. Bottom bunk does not. Bottom bunk, bottom window. Well, there's only one window on the bottom. That, again, implies something that isn't there. Sorry. Um, if the camp kitchen door is open, it will kind of cover that up. So kind of keep that in mind. Um, somebody asked me, you know, what is it that makes these things, you know, why are these imagines? Why are Grand Design so popular? And it's not one thing. It's a death by a thousand paper cuts. Like that smart little shoe garage storage space right next to the door, built right under the dinette, turning air into something useful. They do a different kind of post-style dinette, too. It's a single post, so it's not nearly the knee knocker that some of them are, um, but it has, like, a hydraulic strut built into it and a pair of, like, clamps, so it's very sturdy when it's in the up position. I'm, I'm not going to say it has zero wiggle, but you got to really crack that sucker to, to give it any kind of you know, significant violence and movement. The other thing is when it's down in the sleeper position, which we'll see later, you actually have support under you, which very few dinettes actually do. This right here, I think a lot of people are really excited to see though, at least one big window overlooking your dinette. And if the neighbors have a, an RV whose windows peek inside of your RV, well, you can always tell them to, uh, uh, stop looking at you by pulling that shade down. Now, I'm not saying, I'm just saying if you happen to tape uh, a piece of paper on the back of that with a message for your neighbors, well, what you say is up to you and certainly none of my business. Uh, you'll find the same blackout roller shades through all the bunks, by the way. And something else that I think they really nailed is each bunk has its own light. 
Each bunk has its own set of USB plugs. That is super, super handy. What I don't see on here is a sticker indicating the bunk rating. I do try to specify that when I see it. Unfortunately, um, I don't see it. Now, the way this one is built, there's like a water heater and furnace and stuff on the back wall. What that means is that this is not capable of being one of those fold-up cargo bunks. I would like it if it were. It would mean they'd have to very much re-engineer a lot of major, major things on this RV. That's the bathroom back there in the corner. We're going to get there in just a minute. I would offer you a quick caution. I like to give you, you know, smart points of consideration to think about. This big blank wall right here, it's begging for some kind of um, decoration, right? Make sure you keep it really thin because you don't have a lot of room between that slide fascia in the wall. You don't want to go smashing stuff up and ripping stuff off. Nothing like getting your favorite picture of your gram gram when she was a girl or something like that and then smashing it and then you know now everybody has to cry a little and uh we've 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 ruined the day basically 12 volt dc compressor fridge that you're looking at there i do believe there's a gas electric swaption if you're in more boondock uh kind of focus sort of country and this is interesting this kitchen right here it's all in the slide, like you can kind of see the slide fascia right there. It starts uh, at that rear pantry and goes all the way up here. The TV is not in the slide, however, um, and it does tuck away nicely and secure down for transit. That is a TCL Roku Smart TV, which is cool. But I'm gonna be I'm 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 gonna be real with you about this. That is not the best entertainment center. If somebody's doing dishes, they're kind of in the way. But here's my two cents on that. I don't think this is a camper for somebody who really cares about the entertainment center. If that's important to you, look at a 2400 BH instead of this 23 BHE. Um, the, the thing here is this is, I think, an RV that is, it's, it's, it's a utilitarian glamper. Does that make sense? Um, it is fantastic at feeding, sleeping, and bathing your family. It is not fantastic for like rainy day entertainment space, but that's where I think the TV is kind of there if you need it. Um, and uh, the, 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 the rest of the time, you probably want to spend more time outside. And having the kids be outdoors, well, maybe you sit in here and drink a cup of coffee and watch your... What is your favorite morning show, uh, by the way? Like, do you, do you watch news in the morning? Do you, are, are you like me? Do you watch cartoons and play video games even in the morning? You know, like, I'm a, a 1980s Saturday morning cartoon kid, and I never... I never grew out of that. I never grew out of it, man. <laughs> now, this middle bedroom right here, I had a thought. This is a 60 by 80 True Queen. Walk around. Would you be open to the idea? Because I feel like with a middle bedroom entry, if it was a set of twin beds, with would you prefer the twin to king vertible bed system, which means almost no hanging storage? Or you see these two split hanging wardrobe towers. What if... They merge those and put them fixed between two twin beds that don't convert into some sort of weird king that isn't really a king. Um, it's just a mutant big bed, basically. Would you like the idea of twin beds in this? Or should we just stick with the true queen? Or should they come up with a king option? I mean, let me know. What do you guys, what do you, what do you think here? Um, the uh, one thing I want to really show you nicely here is Imagine does these really nice headboard power pockets. They actually do, I think, some of the very best storage um, around their beds in the industry. It is a bit boxy and bulky, but I've never hit my head on one, and I'm tall enough, I think, uh, if anyone was going to, um, well, it would uh, probably be me. Now, let's dive through some details and see this deeper. Take a look at all the storage, starting right here in the bedroom. Uh, foot locker, lift up, easy lift, uh, queen bed storage with that sliding little tray. Quadruple dresser drawers in this private bedroom with overhead cabinet doors that don't automatically fall shut on your head and hands and cause a bunch of noise. I love that. And it's, it's easy to miss, but this RV in a sense has two pantries, or you could use that sort of like an entry coat closet by the door. Um, over here in the kitchen slide, when you do shove a kitchen into a slide, a lot of people ask why more manufacturers don't build a layout like this. The answer is because you actually give up a lot of kitchen storage when you do it. However, I do think they navigated it well enough that that is not a major issue on this one, but that is my two cents. Do you think this RV has enough storage? Do you think it's lacking in storage? Leave me a comment. Let me know. Personally, I think it's okay. I do like how each bunk you may have noticed has its own individual privacy curtain as well. 
I like that there's a towel bar on that sh uh, bathroom door. I think that's really smart. And it doesn't have the peekaboo, I smell you, uh, you know, wide open shower door uh, or bathroom door here. They did fully enclose and privatize that. There, so there's a lot of different theories as to why manufacturers do this. I have verified by somebody who gave me the real information. The real reason a lot of manufacturers leave that gap open is not airflow like a lot of people want to say. That's a very good, but not exactly the reason they do it answer. The reason most manufacturers don't do that is because that allows the worker to hang the door a little bit higher or a little bit lower. And then basically they cut out the little um, door jam striker plate and install that. So they can install the door and then the striker plate wherever they need to and not have to worry about, did I line it up properly or not? They can make it work. That's the real reason. So Grand Design's doing it a harder way that requires more effort. Porcelain foot flush stool there, which is awesome hip, leg, and shoulder room. I've been told these smaller open face linen cabinet pockets like this work very well for towels and don't end up on the floor. I think that if you've got a bunch of shampoo bottles and stuff like that, you're going to have to find some kind of enclosed space to keep them. The RV six and a half foot tall. It's not the biggest shower they use in the entire Imagine series. Um, I was okay with my head in the bubble, but... I was bonking my head a little bit on the sides there, if you hadn't noticed. Like it, it Now, to be fair, I was facing the opposite direction from what I think most people are going to face. I'm a little bit over six foot tall, by the way, to give you that reference point right there. What I do like, though, that extra extended countertop is way more useful than you might think because it allows you to keep things like your deodorants and, and stuff like that off to the side so that you can keep your toothbrushes and stuff around the sink. Like It actually works really, really well. Something else that works really well in this RV is its road mode. Because, frankly, you don't even need to open the slide unless you want to watch TV. With the slide closed, this RV rocks your socks off. I am really glad, like, my phone started buzzing in my pocket when I was closing the slide. And I reached down for it and I looked down and something in my head went, no, let it go. And I looked up and I realized I left the TV open before I closed the slide. That was almost a problem uh, right there. And I'm the kind of guy, I'd have walked up front and I'd have told them I'd have broke their camper. Because I don't know which dealership this RV is going to end up be shipping to. Uh, I'd have felt real bad if it showed up broken on my account. So, uh Make a note by the slide button, TV closed or something like that. Little pro tip for you from your Uncle Josh. Ask me how I know. And just to kind of demonstrate that, yeah, you can get to the bathroom um, <clears throat> with the slide closed. I thought I'd actually start in the bathroom and, and work my way out of this thing. Uh, because this also, I realized, like, I became very hyper aware of this area after a few seconds ago. And I realized with the way that that countertop and that cabinet wraps around, you've got a pipe back there that's part of all the kitchen stuff i would also put on before you open the slide make a note check behind slide make sure kids little rubber ducky or something like that gi joe action figure didn't slide back there because the last thing you want is something getting jammed up behind the slide causing the slide to not work right causing it to not seal causing you to have a leak causing you to ruin your vacation um you know all kinds of things that that is that's not how I want it to be. And I'm almost wondering, like, I get that they put a slide on this to open it up. Does this RV even need a slide? Let me know. And sometimes people ask me stuff like, hey, Josh, what, what, XLS, what does that stand for? What does that mean? I always thought it was pretty obvious. Uh, as far as I know, it stands for extra large, small. Or <clears throat> something like, I, I don't know. I don't actually know. I don't think it means anything necessarily. Here's a look at the weights and measures. Back to the task at hand. What's it going to take to tow this one? I think a late model tow package half ton makes a very good fit for this camper. If you have a really large class SUV, uh, like the heavy duty tow package expedition, for example, that's always the one that pops in my head for whatever reason. Um, I, I think that could also be a potential fit here. Um, the, uh, the thing there is it, it might depend a little bit on where you're taking the RV. More adverse terrain may require more capable vehicle. That's something I state a lot in my videos, but that's the thing. 
what kind of truck do I need to tow that is a loaded question with no answer until we get a chance to speak with you to understand your situation. They're all a little bit different. You've got an extra thick painted aluminum nose sweep on the front of this thing. Uh, it does use aluminum structures though in basically everything except the roof, which is stick built, but it is made for snow loads and, and it works very, very well. You know, there's a reason almost every manufacturer uses that roof structure. It is a cost effective and very effective way of going about things per capita. Uh, magnet holdbacks for the baggage doors. No slam latches on this series right here. Uh, I know a lot of people really prefer those. I, I think I might be one of them. I do like the, I mean, frankly, maximum size power awning with middle uh, awning support and middle entry door, which means it keeps a lot of that rainy spritz out of your face. Now, if you wanted, we could upfit to things like those more rider LCI stable steps. There's also these handy little um, drop down uh, feet for that bottom step that you can get applied to these. I really kind of like them. Some people do prefer these steps though, because some people camp on some very uneven ground, not necessarily on a, a concrete park pad. And sometimes stable steps can present a bit of a problem. I wish the speakers were lower. I, I almost wish the speakers were built somehow, um, uh, like hidden down inside the, the dinette so that they could be down here, like almost directly above the tires. I, I, I prefer speakers be lower, but that's also not going to be a, a deal breaker for me. If I really dislike the speaker location that badly, I would just get a Bluetooth speaker, which frankly, I would probably do anyway, no matter where the speakers are located. So maybe I should just quit complaining about that. They went with a big capital grill in this Moride slide out tray system here. And I like how it actually includes a handy little kind of grease shield back there. Now I've heard some people say, whoa, 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 isn't it a bit of a problem having that kind of heat near the RV? And no, it's not because they don't produce the kind of heat that would affect the RV's sidewall. Now, if you're not paying attention and somehow you have a bacon grease fire that starts climbing up the side of your camper, <laughs> well, yeah, that's a concern, but that almost takes effort and or neglect to accomplish. Let me ask you a question. This currently has a rear bumper. Um, if they went away from the bumper and gave you uh, an accessory receiver hitch, but it also included a sewer hose like caddy tube under the belly of this thing so that you still have a place for your sewer hose. Would you prefer the receiver and the sewer tube or do you prefer the bumper just how it is? Leave me a little note, let me know. I'd be kind of curious for some input. Now, uh, they do give us access up here to that fully walkable roof. Thankfully, I did not knock my noggin on that uh, girder up there. Uh, giving you a little peek at that roof structure though, fully walkable. You've got a um, roof uh, attic vent, which basically what that's going to do is when the RV is out there in the hot summer sunshine, it will allow the roof structure to breathe and exhaust a lot of the hot air built up in the roof organically because also in, uh, in that roof attic structure is your central air ducting. And if your air ducting is broiling, well, then it's not gonna cool your RV very effectively now, is it? Well, that roof air duct makes massive differences. I think uh, when Cougar added those a couple years ago, three, four years ago now, man, time flies. Um, the, uh, they, they threw one of those heat laser jobs on the inside ceiling panel of their roof. Uh, or they, they put a thermal probe up there, not a, not one of those laser jobs. I'm thinking of something else. Sorry, but they put a thermal probe up there and they found their roof attic structure went from 135 degrees to 85 degrees on the exact same kind of weather conditions made a huge difference. Now, if you're paying attention, you might spot something two somethings. Actually, this is a two headed sewer monster. You have a black and a gray tank outlet in the back but they did put a kitchen gray only outlet in front of the slide. I do at least appreciate they didn't put it under the slide. I can only presume because Imagine is very good at doing single sewer outlets where they can. I can only presume it just physically could not be cross plumbed due to some sort of conflict in the belly. If not, I know for a fact, the guy that designs Imagine is watching this and he is the definition of uh, like, uh, he, he wants to be a perfectionist. He wants to do, be effective in everything he does. And if he finds out that there's a better way to skin a cat, even if that cat already exists, it, he, it's, he's the kind of guy that will literally lose sleep until he can get an engineer and say, yep, we can do it or we can't until he knows for sure. So anyway, if it is possible, I know they're watching. I'm pretty sure they do something about it. Now, if you kind of like this, but you have no use for bunks, take a look at the 22... RBE, yeah, you know me. That is a rear bath model 
with an interesting door side slide. It's not the exact floor plan by any stretch. It's almost the backwards version of a backwards version of a camper, which somehow ends up cross tangentially, totally different. Like, like when the Ghostbusters crossed their streams, like some weird stuff started happening. But some cool stuff. They showed that lady how they do things downtown. Didn't think I'd work at a Ghostbusters reference today, but bang, there we go. Dogs and cats living together, mass hysteria. Until next time, check the link in the video description to see where we have one of these. That can show you MSRP. Grand Design does not allow us to publish discounted sale prices on our website, but our team can assist you with that. And until next time, take care, stay safe, have fun, and best wishes from Bishes, everyone. And, um... They, they, they left. I, uh, I don't know. Oh, it's creepy being in these places alone. Um, <clears throat> if you came here to kill me, clap your hands. No, 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 no,